parks. So let's say you want to plan a 10 a.m. or a 1 p.m. Uh, meet and greet at the park where moms bring kids and then you talk to them about the program. Uh, well, it does work. It can work. There are some cons. The main ones that come to mind is what if that's the day and you can never plan ahead and know that that's the day that the bulldozers are going to be working on the building next to the park. In which case, you can't get a word in and no one can really talk. Uh, so the biggest distraction at parks is usually in the form of noise. Uh, we also have kids falling, we have kids getting hurt, uh, we might have disagreements, we might, you know, have the toddler running off and trying to climb onto the big play, play uh, gym that we don't want them to get on. Uh, so there tends to just be too much distraction at these types of meetings. Now, where this can be helpful, though, is that kids are given an opportunity to meet other kids who might be in the co-op. You can also have brochures and information packets ready to hand out to families who are meeting there. Uh, chances are, because of things like wind or rain, uh, you won't be able to have display tables set up. It depends on what kind of gazebos you might have available at your park. So you're fairly limited in what you can have available for parents to look at at the park meeting. Uh, if it's a windy day, you just don't want to have papers and books out and exposed and blowing away. Uh, so that's, that's the thoughts on the park meeting. It could work, but probably not the best scenario. Home. Perhaps someone in your group has a very large home that they're willing to open up uh, for you to use as an information location. Now, this can work very well. I do recommend that you make it an evening sort of mom's night out kind of thing where just moms and nursing babies come. And it's informal again, you know, you just talk about the program. And this, so this can be a very cozy way to meet people and to start establishing a core group of members. Libraries are also a great option. You can advertise in your church bulletin, for example, a meeting at a library or your parish or the facility. Uh, what seems to work best is when you have the information meeting at the building, you're actually going to be having co-op meetings at. So whether or not that's your parish or another facility, uh, I highly recommend that you have your information meeting be at that location. And I would recommend that you choose, you know, two or three dates throughout the summer or here in the late spring at different times. So let's say maybe you'll have a 10 a.m. meeting, then you'll have a 1 p.m. meeting, and then you pick an evening meeting. And this kind of gives people whose husbands have different schedules or moms who have different schedules, different times and different days of the week even, to hopefully make an information meeting. So there are some notes about locations and some pros and cons. Uh, now with libraries, of course, you're going to have to clean up and abide by their rules, whatever they may be. And it can be difficult for the little ones to be brought to the library if we're too worried about being quiet. It depends on what facilities that they do have there. Uh, so parish and facility or an evening home mom's night out are my top three choices for an information meeting. But do what's best for you and your group. How to set up. Now, the way I recommend setting up is that you think informal, meet and greet. So you want to get there, you and your core committee, you want to get there early. And you're going to want to set up display tables. You can divide them into displays per class with nice, you know, posters of, of things you'll be doing in science or things you'll be doing in history. You can have kids help you work on these displays so you're not doing it all by yourself. 
field trip this place so that families can already get a sense of what kind of field trips you're going to be doing during the year. Yes, that does mean choose the field trips before the year starts. Uh, it's only five. This can be done. And tentative dates. They don't have to be exact yet. Uh, so field trip this place and this place uh, for the classes. This includes having required and recommended books laid out on tables so that people can look through books. And, and start to get a sense of what the students will be doing throughout the year and what mom will be helping them do throughout the year. And any, of course, sample lesson plans from the online samples, feel free to print those and parent guides so that, again, parents have something to hold and to look at and to try to gather a sense of how everything fits together. Now, then you also want to have an enrollment table and you might want to have one of your core committee members at that table, you know, standing by to enroll people because chances are, at least we found at these information meetings, that people sign up right away uh, because co-ops fill up quickly, right? 20 families, that's going to be 80 kids from baby up to sixth grade. Now you add middle school to that, you're looking at 25 families, you know, and almost 100 children. So. Co-ops fill up quickly, people sign up right away. So be ready for that. At your enrollment table, you'll want to have parent handouts so you can hand them sample schedules, sample booklets. You can get them brochures and flyers. Everything's there for them. And then you want people who are already enrolled in the co-op, who are already on your committee, who are already gung-ho about Scola Rosa co-op and home curriculum, you want them there at every information meeting to help answer questions. So again, it's informal meet and greet, just kind of hang out around the table, be available to answer questions, and start to learn people's names. One of the best ways to show that you care about someone and their involvement in what you're doing is to know their name. So really try to make sure to learn those names as you go along. Um, a person's name is important to them. So when someone takes the time to learn a name, uh, we, we feel special. Right? Now, how should you dress? Uh, business casual. This tells people you have it together. Right? The last thing you want is for people to come to an information meeting and to think you are unorganized. So, God willing, you're organized naturally. Might be the case that this is something you need to work on. Uh, and hopefully the materials we provide you throughout the course of things and throughout the course of the year will help you with that. But you really want people to be confident in your ability to help lead the group and lead the program because they're not just looking for a co-op activity day. They may not just be looking for a home curriculum, um, but they're also looking for a little bit of guidance. And so it helps if they can have confidence in you or in the curriculum committee as a whole together. This also tells people that what you're doing you think is important. And it tells them that you think they are important. You're dressing up not only for yourself, but you're dressing up for them. Uh, so again, this is human dignity, and you're showing that you care about them, and you care about what you're doing, and you're wanting to make a difference and hopefully bring goodness or something good to the community. So how to set up? Pretty basic, informal meet and greet. Maybe have some snacks and coffee. Uh, that helps too, and you'll feel better for it as well. Location, you know, do the best you can. I highly recommend having the meetings at the facility you're actually going to be meeting at, um, but do what's best for your group. 